I'm Justin Childs. I'm the head boys and girls basketball coach here at Houston High School. This is my first year at Houston. And uh, right now our boys are eight and one and our girls are seven and three and have really been coming together and playing some good basketball here lately and we've had a good start. I went to high school at a small, tiny school in Louisville called Grace Christian School. And that's where I found my love for basketball, my love for and passion just for the game. Uh, my high school coach was Jason Morgan, and he is who uh, just motivated me and got me to want to get into coaching. He made a huge impact and difference in my life, not just as a player, but as a young man uh, growing into the man I am today. Well, Houston is definitely the smallest for sure. Louisville is, I mean, it's, it's what you would consider a small town. You know, and I grew up there, but there's also five schools in there. We had plenty of restaurants and stuff, and then there's just a lot of, Houston is just very small and compact. Okay, all right. Give me a red out of here, two free zone. I would say my coaching style is to kind of play under what we like to call controlled chaos. All right, let's go. get our opponents into what is uncomfortable. And we, we are trying, in practices, we do things that kind of gets us to where we're comfortable being uncomfortable. Because you can never really replicate the style of a, a chaotic game in practice, but you can get close to it. And we, wanna, we want the style of play, you know, half, high speed, fast break basketball to be kind of what we are known for. But at the same time, we can slow it down and run our sets. And, go through our continuity offenses and different things and we can really adapt but we like to kind of control that pace of a game and be able to push the fast break play high scoring games and uh, that's, that's one thing I've really enjoyed kind of pushing our teams towards in the past few years and we've had a lot of success with that. My philosophy as a coach is really wrapped around one mindset and that is getting my team and my guys and girls to be the best that they're capable of becoming. A lot of, a lot of that comes from John Wooden who is a legendary UCLA coach and he had a pyramid for success and really defined what he thought success was, which was becoming the best that you're capable of becoming really in a nutshell. You know, a lot of people's success looks different. Some people aren't, you know, A students and their best is maybe a C. And, but, but when we can get kids to give their best and become the best that they're capable of becoming. I think that's when you see a lot of success comes. When you get that mindset and you get kids to give their very best, a lot of times the scoreboard takes care of itself. And you hear a lot in coaching, you know, for kids developing in, in a sport, you know, the quote, you know, trust the process. It is definitely a process and it's not something that happens overnight. It is, it is going to be a grind daily to get to where you want to be, but you got to have trust in that process. Well, the other day, I think the other day when we did it, we passed it in, which was fine. That's always an option. Every kid is different, and that's the one thing in coaching. You have to coach kids differently. You cannot just uh, say, hey, you know, it's my way or the highway. You've got to meet this standard, and that's it. You know, you've got to adapt and be able to coach people differently because they respond in different ways, and they have different mindsets. And so uh, I think, you know, in that process, kids that may think, you know, this is my shot, this is a, it works, you know, but then you go and look at the stat line and we may be shooting 21% from the three point line. And I was like, well, there's something missing about it. So you can always kind of be open up to, you know, change. You always got to be able to adapt to change. Uh, to keep my players motivated, we always want to look at the big picture. You know, in the big picture, you want to be where you want to be when February rolls around. And, you know, it is easy. You know, we've had an eight and one starting boys, a seven and three starting girls. It can be really easy, especially as teenagers, to get complacent and to think you, you're where you want to be. But you have got to always, you know, present every opponent, every, you know, stretch in the schedule like it is going to be their next test. And, and there's always going to be somebody better than you somewhere. And uh, you've got to always have that hunger every day to come into practice to get better. And if we, we also kind of go back through that philosophy of keeping uh, the mindset of giving our best. And our best is never just being good enough. You've got to always strive to be great. And a lot of times that comes from, you know, in keeping players motivated, you also kind of got to motivate towards your team captains. We have three team captains that, that I think do a good job of keeping people in line and that are also leaders on our team. We have a sign up in the locker room that says, bad teams, nobody leads. Good teams, coaches lead. Great teams, players lead. Good, good. all right. Now here, ready?
Free throws, two great zones. Step on them, step on them. As far as like off season expectations, you know, we know that championships are won in the off season. They've got to have something that starts. When it's off season, it's, it's not really an off season. You've got to, to be working towards what you're headed for the next year and to be able to kind of keep them motivated to do that. And to every rep that they're doing in the weight room, every drill we're doing with cones and the ball, just different things that may seem minor. And you know, those, we go back to those little details. You know, they're building up and they're pieces of the puzzle that are gonna fit to be successful the next year. And uh, you know, we've got to keep that in, a, in on the front of our mind of what we're working towards in the off season. So our best attribute on our men's team is that we are very stingy on defense. And that's one thing we want to pride ourselves in, in doing. We're not where we want to be yet, but we have held our teams and our opponents in the 30s in most of our games early on. And that's what we're wanting. We always have uh, 10 goals that we set every game. And they get a scouting report. Each team has 10 goals. And one thing that we always uh, you know, harp on is those little details, you know. And, but if we get seven of those goals, we've always, and since I've been doing it for the past seven years, we've never lost a game when we get seven or 10 of those, uh, seven or better of those goals. Hands, hands. We're gonna get the jerseys out, let's go. Put her up there, let's see. Trevor there, Trevor there, go, 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 go. On the girls' side, our uh, best attributes, I would think that we, uh, we try to control the pace of the game. We try to play a little bit slower in girls. You know, we'll push the floor a little bit, but we try to play more half-court possessions because that's where we're better at. And, uh, you know, we try to slow teams down on in transition, but also kind of speed them up in the half-court to kind of get them to make mistakes, not be able to set into their offense. And, uh, and then offensively, you know, we have, we're more, I'd say, offensive set oriented in girls. And whenever we play a half-court game, we're pretty good at executing. Uh, we just got to get better in, in transition and being able to play a full court game. Uh, you know, especially when defenses extend to the full court. Uh, you know, we've had a little trouble with that this year, but I think that's one thing that we have definitely made a focus and practice to work on. Uh, one of the biggest challenges I think we've had on the men's side is that we, we went through a, a cold streak for a few games to where we were shooting in the teens or 20% from three-point range. We were taking a lot, but we weren't making a lot. We make them in practice. And, and so one thing is to always kind of continue to be like, you know, you trust in that, you know, they're going to fall. You got to have confidence in what you, in what you're doing. You know, you got to believe that shot's going to go in when you take it. And, and they've, it's finally, what has been a weakness has finally turned into a little bit of a strength. The other day we had, we made 10 threes in a game against Bruce. And uh, which was a lot, it was a big confidence booster going forward, especially in the region play. But uh, I think we've done a lot better being able to score outside of the paint recently. And that had been a, a a struggle for us earlier. Uh, on the girls' side, one of our weaknesses and, and things that we need to improve on is being able to handle handle pressure. Whenever teams get up in our face and be able to make good passes away away from traps and be able to be where we need to be in those gaps and just be able to be, you know, do the simple things. Sometimes basketball is really simple if you think about it. You need to be able to pass the ball accurately. You need to be able to catch it. You need to be able to make shots. And no matter what we put them in offensively or in a press break and stuff, we still got to be able to execute those actions. Be where we need to be and execute the simple things. And uh, I think that's one thing that we've kind of struggled at, but we're getting better at it. And, uh, but that's definitely been a weakness of ours so far. Uh, and I think we excel in the half court and we've kind of struggled in the full court situations. Well, I know our outlook this year, you know, I am coming in as the first year coach here. The boys, and the girls both won region championships last year in 3A and moved up to 4A this year. And both teams lost, the girls lost a significant amount of starters and players, and the boys lost a significant amount. And the boys, I think, were 20 and six last year, made a run to the third round of the playoffs and you know, lost a good bit. I think lost four starters. But one thing about our team is that we have guys, and it's about Houston, you know, we have guys and girls that are capable of doing things. You know, it's a next next man up or next woman up mentality. You know, we've had guys and girls step up and, and fill those spots. And so our outlook this year, even when losing a lot from the team last year, has still been confident. We expect, you know, we expect to be able to compete. And uh, one thing with our men's team right now, uh, we're very balanced. We had, uh, the other night, we didn't have anybody score more than 12 but we had seven score more than eight. So everybody was either eight, 10, 11, or 12. We were pretty balanced. And that makes you really hard to defend 
when you don't just have one person standing out. And so I think even with the outlook of losing a lot of people off last year's teams, you know, we've had some girls and some guys step up and fill those roles very well this year and have done a good job uh, taking on that new role from where they may have been a supportive player last year to, you know, somebody that steps up and leads and makes things happen this year. And we have to adjust, but the biggest, the biggest key is make sure your kids believe in what you're doing. And a lot of times, you know, as their head coach, if I believe in it and I'm confident in it, they see that and they feed off of that. And they'll be confident in that too. Hey, give me a three. One, two, three. I would say our calling card or what we're known for this year is we, especially on the men's side, we are very, very athletic, very, very fast. Uh, not just, you know, north and south, but we can move laterally fast. We slide our feet, move our feet very well on defense. And, uh, you know, I think that's one thing that you're going to have to really match our athleticism and speed when you play us because we, we has been one thing that is, has really defined us that we are we're fast we we play hard at all times and because if you're not playing hard you know you're probably not gonna have your two feet on the floor at that time and all of our guys when they hit the floor are giving their very best and uh and so with that athleticism and that speed and that strength at the same time too uh especially our guys that play football and our guys that are that don't play football that are in the weight room a good bit you know build off that not just that speed but that strength too so I'd say we're very physical and uh, very fast, and uh, it's going to be a physical game for four quarters when you play us. Uh, our calling card for our girls has been, uh, you know, really just trying to be disciplined, work through, run our sets well, and get good looks. And when we get good looks uh, on offense, you know, we've typically been able to score pretty well and uh, have been able to be pretty disciplined in that. And we, we also uh, do a pretty good job uh, in a three-quarter court press that we do that has been pretty effective for some opponents in our girls. Uh, we've, we've had a few times where it hasn't worked very well, but that's been one thing that we've done really well that's created a lot of offense too. Uh, speaking specifically uh, in our defensive uh, prowess, I guess you would say, uh, being able to play, you know, just up in your face and, and just to get in you and, and defend. Uh, Jay Duffy is one uh, kid that is not just a good defender, but he's, he's going to do it physically, but he's also going to, he's going to talk to you the whole time, not in a you know, negative manner, but he's just going to say that he's an over communicator. If you watch LeBron James play basketball, he is an over communicator. He lets people know I'm here. He talks on the floor. He's a floor general uh, and just be able to kind of talk through calls, cuts out, screens out and be able to talk to his teammates in there. And uh, one thing that Duffy does really well is he just is a barker on defense. He gets up and, and, and defends you and plays really tough, over communicates on defense, which is a great thing. And uh, we just have a lot of guys that will get into you and, and defend you, uh, whether it's from Drake Davis, CJ Gaston, Mike White, Red Parker defending at the rim. You know, we have a lot of guys across the board that will get up and defend. We have guys, you know, on the bench that do the same thing. You know, Malik Price, uh, Tylen Watson, uh, Cameron Razor, a lot of those guys, and Zan Davidson, Will Eccles, and I mean, we got a, a ton of them that uh, just can get up and play. And then EJ Stovall, especially coming off the bench, is a kid that could start any time if we needed him to. Uh, but he, in particular, will get up in the fin, get up and block shots, affect possessions, be able to deflect passes here or there, and just will get up and defend too. I mean, I, I'd say, you know, I mean, I named everybody in our top 11 rotation. They, they are solid defenders and they all have that mindset. And they do a great job uh, just aggravating opposing offenses. I do want y'all to watch y'all's film from the other night because we talked about a lot of missed opportunities, right? A lot of opportunities, I think. Some of you have watched the film, some of you haven't, but I think it's good for us to watch it together, all right? So I'd say Calhoun City over the past few years has been a big rivalry. I know they've had a rivalry with, uh, you know, Oklahoma, Holka, and just kind of the teams right here around in this area. And, but I would say Calhoun City is usually a, a pretty big rivalry. And uh, one of our, matter of fact, one of our best players this year, a starter, senior starter, C.J. Gaston, 
uh, has played for Calhoun City the past three years. He's originally from Houston and moved back last year. So uh, that made this year's game a lot of fun because he's playing against his old guys and, you know, and everybody knew everybody because it's just 15 minutes down the road and it was a lot of fun to play in that game. I would say my favorite sports movie actually is Friday Night Lights the movie. Uh, you know, it's a football movie and I'm a basketball coach, but I love the movie Friday Night Lights, uh, the TV show also. But, but as far as sports movie, uh, just the dynamic of that team and everything and that story, which is, you know, a true story. And, uh, but there's just special time. And, you know, and they end up losing that game at the end and stuff. But just the, the emotion that's captivated in that movie and the experience of a sports team and everything that is involved in and uh, just the outside looking in. And uh, it's just a great movie. And then even like when uh, Tim McGraw's character, like, you know, gives his state championship ring to his son after he just lost it, uh, you know, in the state championship game is always pretty special and has always been a, uh, a big scene for me that I've enjoyed from that movie. But that's, that's probably my favorite for sure. My favorite college team is definitely Mississippi State. Graduated from there, uh, grew up just 30 minutes from Starkville. You know, lucky enough to have a, a player that's played for me that got to go on and play at Mississippi State and be an all SEC player and, and now with the Miami Heat organization. And so I'd say one of the uh, differences in coaching boys and girls, girls are very detail oriented. They want to do things exactly the way it should be done, where guys can kind of just be like, eh. You know, sometimes they're just tempted to do that. You know, we're just stubborn naturally as guys. And, but the girls are really detail oriented in everything they do. They want to do it specifically the way it's supposed to be done. And it's just, they're really good at routines and everything. And that's been a joy to be able to coach. Everybody will dress tomorrow, all right? Not I'm gonna make a habit of this, but everybody's gonna dress tomorrow. So make sure we all got our grays and that now get to shoot in shirts to everybody else tomorrow that doesn't already have one. Y'all got any questions on that? I would say the thing that, that makes a great coach is you've got to have passion and you've got to care and love for the kids that you coach. If they know you care about them, that you love them, uh, they will run through a wall for you. I know that because I would run through a wall for my high school coach. And, and when, when kids know that you care about them, not just as a player, but for who they are, and you want them to be successful, not just on the court, but off the court and in life, uh, you know, as a, as a husband, as a wife, as a father, as a mother, uh, and they know that you care about them, they'll give their very best for you. And so one of the biggest things you've got to have in coaching is you've got to be able to, to show, not just tell them, but show them that you love them, that you care about them, and that you're in it with them. And uh, I think when they know you care, uh, they're willing to do their very best for you.